Hey, what's up, guys? This is Johan, and on this video, we are going to be doing a weather change on uh, the two quarantine systems. Um, 75 gallons over there is coming along really good. You can see I got the, some of the panel in under it, but that will be the next week's Sunday's video, hopefully. Oh man, just started rain outside. <laughs> I was going to take you guys outside to see the garden as well, but uh, started pour down. So, um, rainy Sunday, so let's go ahead and uh, do a water change. I'm going to turn you guys around, put you guys in a tripod, let you guys see. Um, so, um, let's get into it. Alright guys, so we are here at the quarantine systems on my left, your right, um, you can see the convict tank, the water looks a little bit green, not a little bit green, it looks a lot of green, that is because it is due for water change and it's been due for water change for the past couple of weeks or so, um, but I've just been busy training and working on all that stuff, so um, kind of slipped my mind, it's not slipped my mind, but it's always been in the kind of back of my mind where I need to do water change, but then life just hits you, but the convict tank is doing really well um, the ick is almost completely cleared off but um, still think I have a little bit more few dots on because I do see it um, flashing every now and then um, so I'm gonna do the water change make sure I clean out all the rocks completely and then um, get it down to that 1.026 again because you can see the water level is a little bit too low I mean 1.06 the hypersonally 1.010 can see that the water level did drop down because I haven't topped up the system just yet and then um, so convict tank still doing okay and you can see it still hyperactive ready to go ready to eat and then on my right um, because I've seen it sw swimming for a little bit that new marsh Adela added a few weeks ago um, well he got a couple weeks ago and um, when I first got it, I was a little bit um, he I was a little bit hesitant to get it, but it was a good deal. So most of the fish usually run from anywhere from 150, I mean 100 dollars to about two, three hundred dollars, depends on where you get them. And this is a good size. I got them for 55 dollars, so that's a good price. Um, almost a steal of a deal. Um, some people usually get, some people can get them. It depends on some states for 45 dollars. So, but um, mine about about 55. And uh, when I first got them, it kind of gave me a little scare because um, everybody who keeps this fish in the past also always says um, that it's hard fish and difficult fish to keep um, because you need to keep them in pairs. I'm not sure if I just locked out with this fish, most likely I did, or it is my experience with fish. Um, but this one, it, it's a champ. Um, when I first got it, I did have a little bit of problem though. It did not um, seem to take to a lot of the food that I was giving it, most likely due to stress. Um, the guy at the fish store um, said that he feeds um, pellets, so that was one of the things why I, I did get it. But um, the reason it, I guess I had problems because I started first with New Life Spectrum because um, I wanted to get it a nice diet of, um, you know, something that is nutrient packed. So I usually give new fish New Life Spectrum that one or just this one and uh, that usually most fish usually go for those but this guy didn't care for it at all um, and it still doesn't so what I had end up doing I had to um, just try all the foods I have and I do have uh, quite a ton of food um, so one of the things I did see that worked was um, the Mastic by Easy Reef that worked really really well um, so that got his appetite to eat got his appetite up but the thing about this um, I know with this fish at least it does not like the party food so when I put it in there it will, it will go for it but the food will actually break up when he chews on it because this fish has teeth all the way down through its entire um, mouth um, so that it it showed an interest but it would chew on it and then it would, because it would break up it would kind of freak the fish out and then another pellet that I do have and I feed it to all my fish and all my fish find it irresistible is um, Ocean Nutrition um, this is just a, um, it's a herbivore formula but I think every fish that I had from um, triggers to um, Hollywood tusk all my tangs clownfish and all that they really like this food so Ocean Nutrition if you guys ever had a fish that is finicky that doesn't want to eat for me, this one really works really well. Um, it smells potent, <laughs> but I think that's why the fish like it. So, 
this the once I got him on this then he started to relax and calm down and started to get used to me. Um, I tried flick food so I have this other ocean nutrition flick food. This didn't really fish didn't care for this one and then um, same herbivore formula with this one. Um, fish didn't it chewed on it but it just sped it back out because it was like weird so um, didn't really care for that one so ocean nutrition um, pellets the herbivore formula this one really works I had a lot of success with all my fish like I said um, so once I once I got them on the pellets then he started to calm down um, another thing a few things I tried were mysis didn't really take to that first day uh, I think because it was still stressed out so about right around day three Mysis shrimp work really well, but this is a big fish, and I will have to put a lot of mysis in, in this little 20 gallon long nan nano tank. And I didn't want to do that, so I um, had some salmon that I have. Um, I usually cook salmon or some type of whitening fish or some, some type of marine fish that I have. I'm usually cooking the, that for me and my wife, so I had got some salmon, chopped it up in my food processor, and then um, let it freeze again in little small little chunks, and then start feeding it to that. And then um, that's more I actually quite like salmon chunks. So if you guys ever have any problems with you know a marsh idol or any fish, try feeding them um, actual fish. So like minced fish instead of just feeding them like the regular f fish food that we get, like you know pellets, flakes, mysis and stuff like that. Uh, mysis is usually a good start on brine shrimp. So brine shrimp is cooler with him as well, but it's a big fish. Uh, mysis, I mean not mysis, and brine shrimp, kind of small, so he'll go after it, but it, it won't do him any nutrition. So um, if you guys ever have problems with fish, um, so far this guy likes um, ocean nutrition. So I do rec heavily recommend this food, and then um, mixing your making your own food. So just get go to the store and get you some um, you know, a little small piece of salmon, chop chop it up, and then mince it up if it depends on the size of the fish, and then um, just feed it to the fish. Here it goes, and then that usually goes go. So, anyways, <laughs> enough of me rambling. Let's go to start doing this water change. Alright guys, so uh, simple, just my two 5 gallon buckets, I'm going to take out, remove 5 gallons from this, so that's over 50% because of the evaporation and whatnot, and then uh, I'm going to remove 10 gallons from this one, um, I may do a little bit more of this one because it is due for a water change, so I think I might do um, 7 or so gallons from this one, so simple. Uh, hose, suck it out, uh, and then get to go. So, um, if you guys don't want to put your mouth on a hose, one of the things you can get is one of these. I got this extremely cheap from um, like Walmart. I think it's like 98 cents. You can probably get these at the dollar store. So it is basically a, um, a so you could um, siphon out gas. So it has a hand pump. Um, I know there is those. Uh, siphons that you buy for aquariums and you put them on the water and you kind of shake it and it comes out but this one all you got to do is just put it in here and then a couple of those and then so i just gotta adjust the amount of air that's right here and then just let it go Alright, so I got the um, all the water that I need to still a bit foggy. I want to take a little bit more, but that should be okay. Um, Convict is over there, a little bit stressed out because I did mess with it and moved the rocks around. So he's a little bit freaking out, but it's it's okay. He'll be alright. Um, so I'm gonna head and uh, go back. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and uh, fill it back up with some more water and top it off, and then should be good to go. Alright guys, so uh, the 10 gallon is done, Point, um, 10 gallon convict tank is done, uh, I'm still hiding back there, it's still a little bit stressed out just a tad bit. So let's go ahead and get this filter out, or clean this filter. So I, I've been running the protein skimmer from the 20 gallon nano um, 
no time to challenge, so. Ooh, that's green stuff. <laughs> Let's get this out. Um, the wall still has a green tint, but it's much clearer than it was before. Alright guys, so all the weather changes are done for the both quarantine systems and uh, the fish is starting to settle out. The convict tank is still a bit pissed off with me um, because I did mess with him a little bit and uh, um, the marsh adult is doing really good. Uh, when I first got him, I remember his um, little thread wasn't that long, now it's almost 3 inches off of, like where the bone is. Yeah, it's almost 3 inches off where the little that little... Um, the little bone ends it's actually three inches long so it's doing okay doing really healthy and very happy type fish um, now that it's used to me it's used to what I feed they used to what I feed it <coughs> it's very happy another thing I forgot to mention that I do feed it is um, I do have some here algae growing in the refugium in the 75 gallon so I do feed it some of that as well and it is taking that so um, I was I'm still I was wondering like do I put in the 75 gallon or do I keep it here for an extended period of time or not because of um, some people say it's not reef safe so I was debating that but then I'm putting a queen angel in so um, you know, <laughs> this fish is probably the last of my worries the queen angel is more of my worries for the coral that it will eat but I've had that queen angel for a long time almost almost a year and a half since it was a little little, little um, little fish so it's probably all only conditioned to pellet food but we'll see <coughs> it is a wild animal so it may just instinctively go after some corals <coughs> sorry um but yeah so that's doing good um oh let me show you guys the 75 gallon and um how it's coming along so far all right guys so the 75 gun is uh right here and you can see it's really doing well let me turn on the white lights so you guys can see Well, yeah, it looks a little bit better. So it's doing really well. I actually <coughs> just turned the lights on today for the first time. It's I've been doing a, like a five day, but mainly a four day um, blackout because <coughs> of um, the new rock. I was getting some um, some of some weird algae, and I think it's only everybody for new rock i'll probably do a video of that on wednesday or in the next two sundays um live rock versus starting an aquarium with live rock versus starting an aquarium with, um dry rock things to expect um and things i've seen so if you look right here this rock is not as clean as all the other ones get that into focus all right there it goes so it's clean but compared to what the rock looked like last week um it, it was 10 times worse like there was all types of weird algae some stringy stuff things i don't see, usually see it's almost <clears throat> almost like it was um like uh like it went through a triple diatom bloom um it's like extremely thick brown stuff but um once i turn the lights off even the sand is extremely white and all that so but i only experienced that with only the two new rocks uh, this rock was fine this rocks are fine the only place i'd see it is on the tips of corals that was growing like so like here you can see that white part is growing some new um is doing some new growth so i'll always see it on the white parts of the tips of the coral but as far as the rocks the rocks are pretty clean so now that i have you know now i turned off the lights for about four days it looks like it's been doing really well the corals are still going so I may turn the lights off again. I just turned them on today just to see what progress I made. But I may just leave them on and then check tomorrow if the lights are um, looking any, if the algae comes back tomorrow or the day after, then I'll go for the full five days. So I'm thinking of also doing a once a month, turn the lights off for four days. So at the end of every month, turn the lights off completely. 
it's a little experiment that I've been thinking about, but we'll see. So, um, and this squirrel is doing really well as well. Um, I took it out, I took it for a dip because it wasn't opening and then it's opening now. So I didn't see anything fall off, but it's starting to bounce back. So light's been on for about uh, a couple hours. So it's, everything's not completely open the way it should. These are still closed, but this is open completely. So she's doing okay. Nice. So <laughs> um, happy and it thinks I'm going to feed it, which I probably am going to put some algae and stuff here. Yeah, fl firefish is back there in its own thing. Um, <clears throat> and then the peppermint shrimp always hides in this cave right here, but it's not in the cave. It's somewhere hiding right now. So I don't know where it is, but yeah, guys, Sim5 Gallon is coming along. So next week's video is gonna, going to be the um, panel, how I built this and what I wrapped it in. So that's good to go. So you can see I got the apex and stuff in there. It's coming along good. I still got this. It's going all the way to the roof, but I got to cut it. So it's um, part of this because this is not on here, right? I just laid it on there. So 75 guys coming coming along. Um, I still got to do the these black panels that I got from Ikea. That's going to go up top right there. And that's just going to give me a nice little, um, you know, uh, canopy area so that um, the fish won't jump odd thing is I don't have a knock on wood <laughs> they don't jump tonight or before I build this I don't have a lid um, I think uh, most fish all fish jump but the only time I, th I feel like fish jump it's when they're in a shallower aquarium and when they're not comfortable um, so far there is nothing really stressing any fish out the firefish is the only fish that would jump and it's no none of the other fish are coming after it i don't it does it doesn't get scared by me anymore um but you know i'm saying that and the clownfish are going after it <laughs> so i may have to get a, a temporary lid quickly so the clownfish we wouldn't mess with it and all of a sudden they are so that's new anyways so yeah like i was saying um most fish usually jump if there's some of the things stressing it out and if they don't feel comfortable but most of the fish in here feel comfortable. As long as the clownfish stop being buttholes, then everything will be good. Yeah, guys, um, that pretty much does it for this video. If you guys liked the video, go ahead and hit the like button down below. And also remember to subscribe and also leave a comment down below. I'll catch you guys in the next one.